What's going on YouTube? So I'm actually doing this section of the voiceover in post because originally the music here got flagged for copyright. But we're doing a solo run with Don Doza, the big catfish Pokemon. I've got some links in the description as to how I got Don Dozo in Gen 1, but the long and short, I used the Pokemon disassembly on GitHub, and I have a wiki in the description as well to help you out in case you want to try it. Looking at the sprites that I made, they're not bad, they remind me of Wish Cash. But of course, we have to look at something very important, which is Don Dozo's stats. While 65 base special and 35 base speed aren't the best for a solo run, 150 HP and 100 and 115 in attack and defense will be great for the early game. And the move pull all around is solid. I didn't add any new moves. I tried to take what it can learn in Gen 9 and see what's available in Gen 1 and go from there. And that's how I came up with this learn set of Tackle, Water Gun, Rest, Waterfall, Bite, Body Slam, Hydro Pump, and Double Edge. But let's go ahead, get our starter, fade to black, and get this run underway. We can go ahead and pick this back up in Oak's Lab where we have our first rival battle. Now, because Tackle is only 95% accurate and Bulbasaur likes to use Growl, even with Don Dozo's tremendous attack, this battle takes a little longer than you'd expect. And thankfully, Bulbasaur doesn't have any grass type moves yet, because that will be a problem later. One positive for Don Dozo is that Brock won't be a problem. However, I decide to take on all of the bug catchers in Viridian Forest anyway. We're in the slow level up group, and all the experience we can get now will come in handy down the line. I do, however, skip the optional rival battle, and you'll kind of see why with the rival 2 battle later. With the slow grind for Dondozo, we make it to Brock at 15 minutes in-game time. And as for Brock himself, well I think you know how this is gonna go. Both Geodude and Onyx take two water guns each to defeat, but neither are really a threat to do anything to us. And I wish I could say that things start to open up and get easier for our big catfish after defeating Brock. But, I would be lying to you. I end up taking on all the trainers on Route 3 except for two of them. The lass who's above the youngster where you can battle either of them, and then the other lass who you have to jump down from the ledge to battle. And originally here at this point in the video, I had planned to talk about Don Dozo and Kingler's stats to justify the thumbnail, but instead, I'm going to ask you, the viewer, let's pretend the physical special split isn't a thing yet. Let's pretend Don Dozo is just some overpowered Gen 1 Pokemon, who maybe stat-wise compares more to, like, Rhydon with that physical bulk. Kingler was a mod in Gen 1 that couldn't take advantage of its typing due to water moves being special. And that's originally what I thought of when thinking of Don Dozo and when I first made this ROM. Let me know in the comments which Gen 1 Pokemon you think compares most to Don Dozo. Originally I was going Kingler, but I'm thinking maybe Rhydon might be more of a fair comparison. Both have low speed, low special, but high attack, HP, and defense. Let's go ahead and pick this up in Mount Moon though, where we take the superior fossil in the Dome Fossil. And after this annoying Zubat encounter coming up, we can go ahead and get our Mount Moon timestamp. And Don Dozo is making pretty good time. We're at 37 minutes in-game time. And the question now becomes, do we fight Rival 2 or Misty next? Well, I'm gonna fight Misty. Because of her AI, her Pokemon won't use their water attacks because they're not very effective. And because of Don Dozo's bulk, she's not gonna be doing much with Tackle or anything like that. Staryu goes down in 4 tackles thanks to an X-Defend. And against Starmie, it's just a battle of the tackles. If my HP gets too low, I can just use Rest to heal up. And that's exactly what I do. Starmie does string together a few critical hits, and because it outspeeds me, I take a risk by going for tackle. I'm down to 2 HP as I use Rest. But we're healed up to full. Starmie can't do anything. Easy second badge. And the best part about it is that we now have TM11 Bubble Beam, which we can teach to Don Dozo to upgrade the weak water gun on its moveset. And with Misty out of the way, we can go ahead and take on Rival 2, and this is actually the second attempt. 
The first attempt was Sand Attack Hell from Pidgeotto. And this attempt starts out well. I should have been using Bubble Beam as opposed to Tackle because it is technically the stronger option because of Stab and Base Power. Like the first attempt, which I didn't show, Pidgeotto gets off a Sand Attack before going down and only used two as opposed to the five in the first battle. Against Abra, I rest up to heal up to full HP because I'm going to need it for the Bulbasaur. And I should have been using Tackle here. I'm using Water Gun, and I'm going to switch to Tackle shortly. I think I was just misclicking, but Abra goes down rather quickly. While it is annoying that we miss twice against Rattata, we do hit our two Tackles afterwards, and we can move on to the final Pokemon Bulbasaur. And really, I don't want to see Growl or Leech Seed, because with all those Sand Attacks, Leech Seed will be healing it up as we miss, and it does get off a Leech Seed, but I get some lucky crits, and Don Dozo is able to take out Bulbasaur. And with the rival out of the way, we're going to be doing a lot of the optional trainers after Nugget Bridge. Since we're in the slow level up group, we're going to need all the experience we can get, especially for later on in the run. Don Dozo makes quick work of the trainers on Nugget Bridge, especially the hikers afterwards, and we can go ahead and pick this up in the SSN, where we're going to get access to one of our level up moves rather early in Body Slam, and it's going to replace Tackle right away. There's also a TM for Rest, but I decided to skip that. I think Rest might be staying on our moveset for the long haul, since we don't have access to Ice Beam or Blizzard. That'll make the Rivals Pokemon a problem when they're fully evolved. But for now, against Rival 3, Body Slam is a two-shot on Pidgeotto, we level up going into Raticate. Body Slam can't quite one-shot it. It counters with Hyper Fang, that doesn't do a lot, and then Quick Attack, we knock it out. Kadabra outspeeds but just goes for Teleport, we knock it out in one Body Slam. And last is Ivysaur, I go for Body Slam, it does half, and it just uses Leech Seed, and we're able to knock it out. So far, things haven't been bad for Don Dozo, and its move pull is really going to open up in the mid-game when we can get access to Rock Slide and Earthquake. But as we are saying goodbye to the SSN, we're not going to be saying hello to Lieutenant Surge, no. We're going to be putting him off for later on. Instead, we're going to head to Rock Tunnel which nothing poses a threat in there, so we can just pick it up at our post-rock tunnel timestamp. And we're at 1 hour 41 minutes in game time, so Don Dozo looks like it's on pace to finish around 4 hours. We're gonna head to Celadon City right away. We're going to head to the Rocket Game Corner, because there's some high money items we can pick up there, along with one useful TM. That being Don Dozo's strongest level up move in Double Edge which could pair very well with Rest in case we need something with more power than Body Slam. And as far as the battle against Giovanni, well we have Waterfall on our moveset, so the first two Pokemon go down in one hit. Kangaskhan is a bit annoying because of Comet Punch, and I only have two uses of Body Slam left for this battle. Fortunately, it locks itself into Rage, but even if it hadn't, we do have Rest to heal up for full, so I wasn't worried at all about this. With Giovanni out of the way, we have a few different places we can go. We can battle Erika, we could backtrack to Surge, or we can go to Pokemon Tower. While I decide what to do, I'm going to give the little girl a Soda Pop for Rock Slide, and in the end, I decided to backtrack to Vermilion City to take on Surge, that way we can get around the map easier since we can use Fly outside of battle. And with our higher level, we should be able to win now. And the biggest question is, will we be able to one-shot Raichu? Well, we one-shot Voltorb with Body Slam, we're going to one-shot Pikachu, and now for Raichu. It outspeeds and hits Thunderbolt, doing tremendous damage and paralyzing us. We're fully paralyzed, Body Slam doesn't even get a hit, and Raichu knocks us out. So let's go ahead and try that again. We already know that the first two Pokemon are one-shots with Body Slam. Let's just get right to Raichu. Surge uses an X speed, and Body Slam nearly one-shots it. While Thunderbolt does big damage and paralyzes us, we do get through with another Body Slam to get the win. Three gym badges down, and I would say that Don Dozo isn't performing bad up to this point. 
we can make our way to Pokemon Tower to take on Rival 4 and progress the story. And Dondozo has the perfect moveset as of right now to really counter every Pokemon on the Rival's team. He leads with Pidgeotto for the last time. We have Rock Slide on our moveset. It's a one-shot, so we're not going to see any sand attacks. Gyarados is next, and while Rock Slide doesn't one-shot, he uses a retroactive potion. We knock it out the next turn with Body Slam. Growlithe is next, I go for Waterfall for the one-shot. Out comes Kadabra, Body Slam, one-shots it as well. Last is Ivysaur, and while Body Slam doesn't one-shot it, it just goes for Leech Seed. Easy Rival 4 battle. There's not much that happens in Pokemon Tower, but of course we have to decide where to go next. Do we go to Sylphco, or do we go to Cycling Road? And the answer to that is a little bit of both. Well, I should say a quick detour to Sylphco, and then we're going to head to Cycling Road. In Sylphco, I'm going to head straight for the 10th floor, and you've seen enough of my videos and others to know we battled this one rocket, and we can get the Carbos, the Rare Candy, but most importantly, TM26 Earthquake, which Don Dozo can learn. And with Earthquake on our moveset, it's going to make the battle against Koga and Blaine when that time comes much easier. Along with the fact that we now have a base 100 power move, and will actually be the strongest move base power wise on our moveset for the remainder of the game. And as far as Koga's battle goes, it wasn't as one-sided as you think. Against the first coughing, we don't even one-shot it with Earthquake. It misses Smog, so we're able to knock it out with Rock Slide. And because we couldn't one-shot it, we're not going to one-shot Muck either. We actually do, okay, a little over half. Koga goes for an X attack and we knock it out with Body Slam. But because we level up, we will knock out the second coughing with one Earthquake. But now is wheezing, and you noticed, I don't have much PP left. Earthquake does less than half, it hits me with Sludge, I have to go for Rock Slide at this point, and wheezing decides to blow up, and we survive on 10 HP. I had a feeling we would survive, but I also thought about using Rest to guarantee it, but I'll take the close win. We're gonna head through the Safari Zone next to pick up the remaining HMs of the run, and because we haven't gone through Sylphco yet, I'm going to be doing a first on the channel. The house next to the Wardens in Fuchsia, there's the Fishing Guru who gives you the good rod, and there's a pool of water in his backyard, which we're going to catch a Poliwag so that we can teach it Surf. And once we teach it Surf, we can head to Cinnabar Island to battle Blaine. And Blaine's gym will also be a great training spot for us since we have both Earthquake and Rock Slide on our moveset and should pretty much one-shot everything in that gym. And as far as the battle against Blaine, even though we're underleveled, the battle isn't tough. Earthquake one-shots Growlithe, and against Ponyta, he uses a first-turn Super Potion. Blaine's AI still always surprises me. Rapidash is out next. And while an Earthquake doesn't one-shot it, it just goes for Tail Whip the next turn, we're able to knock it out the next turn, and last is Arcanine. Blaine once again uses a first turn Super Potion, Earthquake does about half, another Super Potion, Earthquake brings it to red, and Arcanine goes for Roar. Good job, Blaine. Your AI is the greatest thing in this game. Before we head to Sylphco, though, we're going to take on Erika. And although we outlevel her Pokemon by 10 levels, this battle surprised me. Earthquake is not a one-shot on Victory Bell. I probably should have went for Body Slam. She just goes for a retroactive Super Potion. We're able to knock it out. Against Tangela, I do go for Body Slam. It's not a one-shot, but we fully paralyze it. And against Vileplume, it also withstands an Earthquake. It retaliates with Mega Drain, which thankfully doesn't do too much to Don Dozo, and we're able to knock it out. No backtracking or forgetting Erica this time. There's only one thing left to do to advance the story, and it's to head to Sylphco to take on Giovanni. But of course, before we can take on Giovanni, we have to face Rival Fievel, who is a problem for a lot of Pokemon. But I don't think he's going to be a problem for Don Dozo. He leads with Pidgeot, who goes for Quick Attack. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Rock Slide fails to knock out Pidgeot. We follow it up with Body Slam for the knockout. Gyarados is next. Once again, Rock Slide can't get the knockout. It goes for Bite, which doesn't do much. 
Body Slam for the knockout. Up next is Growlithe, and we have Earthquake or Rock Slide. I choose Earthquake, both are super effective, it goes down in one shot. Next is Alakazam who outspeeds and goes for recover, but Earthquake one shots it. Last is Venusaur though. I go for Body Slam, it's doing maybe a third. Vine Whip does quite a bit. Earthquake can't get the knockout, and Razor Leaf finishes me off. And I tried this battle a couple more times, only to get to Venusaur and go down to Razor Leaf. So I decided to train up some in Sylph. There are plenty of Rocket Grunts and Scientists that we can take down pretty quickly with Earthquake. Considering that they have Poison types and Electric types for majority of their Pokemon. And they're all going to disappear once we beat Giovanni, so might as well get the experience now. I try again at level 44, and I'm going to level up once we knock out Pidgeot. Which, like the first battle, Rock Slide does not one-shot it. However, the rival just uses a retroactive potion. We're able to knock it out with Body Slam. And as we level up, we have the option to learn Hydro Pump, but I'm not going to because, well, our special is trash. Rock Slide doesn't one-shot Gyarados, it just goes for Bite. We knock it out with a second Rock Slide. Out comes Growlithe. We have Rock Slide or Earthquake. I choose Rock Slide this time. It's a one-shot. Alakazam comes out. It goes for Disable, disabling Rock Slide. Earthquake gets the one-shot, but now is that pesky Venusaur. I go for Earthquake, doing over half, and it goes for Razor Leaf, and we hold on with 30 HP to get the knockout with a second Earthquake. And I'm glad I didn't have to do more grinding after those first few losses because I want Don Dozo to get a good time. And so far, it looks like it might get a pretty decent time. And as far as Giovanni, it's a typical Giovanni battle when you have a move like Earthquake on your moveset. I'm not going to bother narrating this one. Nidorino and Rhyhorn both go down to one Earthquake, and while the Kangaskhan and Nidoqueen take two attacks, Giovanni just wastes his time going for a guard spec, and Nidoqueen uses Poison Sting. So with him out of the way, let's go ahead and take on our second to last gym leader in Sabrina, which will get a timestamp, 3 hours 27 minutes. Not bad, Don Dozo, not bad. And just like Giovanni's battle, Sabrina's battle is quick, even quicker. Kadabra goes down in one body slam, crit didn't matter. Mr. Mime goes down in one body slam, two crits in a row. The chances of that, I wonder. Venomoth goes down in one rock slide. And Alakazam goes down to one earthquake. So let's go ahead and face Giovanni. And this battle is very similar to the one at Sylphco where we can't knock out any of his Pokemon in one hit, with the exception of Dugtrio. Rhyhorn hangs on from an earthquake. It goes for Stomp, not doing much. We knock it out. Doug Trio does outspeed us, but Giovanni uses a guard spec, so Earthquake is able to knock it out. Nido Queen hangs on from an Earthquake, it just goes for Body Slam, it doesn't paralyze us, we knock it out the next turn. And just like Nido Queen, Nido King hangs on from an Earthquake, it just goes for Thrash, we knock it out the next turn. All that's left is Rhydon, it also withstands an Earthquake, it does less than half. And it's three Earthquakes to knock it out, as all it does is hits us with Stomp. That's all eight gym badges for the big catfish of Paldea. And now we've got the toughest trainers ahead. Rival 5 gave us problems. Rival 6 is probably going to be tough as well. And as far as the league, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We're just going to get into the Rival 6 battle. Like the battle against Rival 5, Rock Slide is not able to one-shot Pidgeot. It retaliates with a Wing Attack and Quick Attack before a second Rock Slide knocks it out. We level up going into the Rhyhorn, and if we had a setup move, this would be the perfect time to use it. But we're just going to have to go for Earthquake, which doesn't knock it out. The rival uses a Retroactive Potion, we take it out the next turn. Gyarados is next. Rock Slide misses as it hits me with Bite, critting and not doing much. A second misses and a second crit with Bite. Rock Slide finally hits, failing to knock out Gyarados. It misses Leer. We knock it out the next turn. Against Growlithe, I'm going to go for Rest to restore my HP. It can't do much to me. It just goes for Agility and Takedown. We knock it out with an Earthquake. Now it's on to Alakazam, who outspeeds us, hits us with Psychic, and gets a special drop. Earthquake is able to knock it out. 
but now we have half HP for Venusaur, so the rest kinda wasted now. Earthquake does maybe a third, Vine Whip knocks us out. We're going to try this again, but we're going to pop some rare candies first to bring us up to level 57. And even at level 57, we still can't one-shot Pidgeot with Rock Slide. It only goes for Agility and Whirlwind though, so we're able to take it out without taking any damage. Rhyhorn just like before, one Earthquake will knock it out. Gyarados has much better stats than Pidgeot, so it's going to withstand a Rock Slide as well. It retaliates with Dragon Rage, but when you have 273 HP, losing 40 HP is nothing. We're able to knock it out. Growlithe, it goes down in one Earthquake. And now the question is, how much damage are we going to take from Alakazam? Well, it goes for Reflect, so Earthquake is only going to do half. It goes for Reflect again. We're able to knock it out. So nearly full HP for Venusaur. Earthquake does over half. Crit probably mattered. Vine Whip doesn't do that much, and we're able to knock it out. Had it gone for Razor Leaf, I wonder how much that would have done. I think we might have been able to survive, but it wouldn't have shocked me if it one-shot us. But we've got the League next. Let's talk about them. And I don't think any members are going to give Don Dozo a problem. I believe the Champion will. Lorelei, we have Rock Slide for her Pokemon, it's super effective. Bruno, we've got Earthquake. Agatha, we have Earthquake, and Lance, we have Rock Slide. But the champion, you know, what's Venusaur going to do? What's Alakazam going to do? Is it going to get a Psychic Crit and lower our special? Is it going to confuse us with Psybeam? Will Rock Slide one-shot Pidgeot and Gyarados? It's tough to say. I did battle a few optional trainers in Victory Road, so we are going to be entering the League at level 59. And when we check out Don Dozo's timestamp, we're at 4 hours on the dot. And I thought it would finish around the 4 hour mark or a little over, so it's hanging around where my prediction is. As far as the battle against Lorelei, I actually restart this first attempt because, well, I get hit with Growl, I fail to knock it out with Earthquake, and I just kind of got frustrated at that point and wanted to start fresh. So take 2 against Lorelei, hopefully we don't get hit with too many Growls. Let's see how this battle goes. Against Dugong, I go for Rock Slide. We one-shot it thanks to a crit. Perfect. Next is Cloyster, and Rock Slide's doing about half, maybe a little less. It confuses me, and I hit myself for a few turns as it just goes for Super Sonic, and eventually Spike Cannon. Spike Cannon doesn't do too much damage, and while we've got Cloyster down to a sliver of health, we hit ourselves as Lorelei heals. We finally break through, we're not able to knock it out, and she just keeps healing it, but eventually we do knock it out. Slowbro is next, I'm going to try to preserve some Rock Slide PP. We paralyze it with our first Body Slam, and it's just going for Withdraw and Amnesia. Not really attacking us, it doesn't have anything good to hit us with, but eventually we knock out Slowbro with enough Body Slams. On to Jinx. I go for Body Slam, thinking it's enough to take it out. But it isn't. Lorelei just goes for a super potion. We knock it out with a second body slam. We level up going into Lapras. We have the option to learn double edge, which I'm going to decline. I still have the TM for it. I go for rock slide on Lapras, doing over half. It hits me with body slam, but even though it crits, it's not enough. And that's Lorelei down. And next up is Bruno, who if we had a water move and good special, would really be a pushover. But he's still a pushover for Don Dozo. And I'm not going to bother narrating this too much. The first four Pokemon are all taken out with a combination of Earthquake followed up by a Body Slam and vice versa. Only until we get to the Machamp does it take three Earthquakes. And next up we have Agatha with Bruno out of the way. And you would think that the Earthquake trend is going to continue. Which it does, but Agatha also puts up a little bit more of a fight than Bruno. I get unlucky against the first Gengar, as Earthquake gets a 1 in 256 miss. I then get put to sleep with Hypnosis, and then get hit with Nightshade, and then Confuse Ray. I wake up, and I don't hit myself, I'm able to KO the Gengar, and from here, the battle is essentially a cakewalk. Yes, the first Gengar was trolly, but I'm able to nearly one-shot all of Agatha's Pokemon from here. 
Yeah, Golbat took two hits, but there is that slim chance Agatha could have beat us had she just chose the proper moves, but there's a good chance that I could have just gotten through confusion and used rest. Although that would have put me vulnerable to Dream Eater. Next up though, we have Lance, and I used PP ups on both Rock Slide and Earthquake. Should have just dumped the PP ups into Rock Slide. Anyway, his lead is Gyarados. I go for Rock Slide. Thanks to a crit, we're able to one shot it. Next up is the first Dragonair. I go for Earthquake. It hangs on from it. It retaliates with Slam. It does a blip. We knock it out. The next Dragonair also survives an Earthquake, and it hits me with Hyper Beam, which does more than Slam, but still not a lot. We knock it out, we level up before going into the Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl, of course, outspeeds, hits me with Takedown. It doesn't do much. Rock Slide is able to take it out. And from here, it's just Dondozo vs. Dragonite. And I'm going to speed up this footage against Dragonite, because this battle against it, even sped up, took so long. Because Dragonite eventually maxes out its defense, and Lance heals with a Hyper Potion, I didn't think I'd have enough PP to get through the battle. But Dondozo is on to the champion after its second attempt in the league, because we did have to reset. Thanks to the power of video editing, I'm going to use my remaining rare candies to bring us all the way up to level 66. We're all healed up, and there's only one trainer left. Let's see if our Paldean Catfish can do it. The champion leads with Pidgeot. I go for Rock Slide. Surprisingly, it doesn't one-hit KO it. It retaliates with Wing Attack, only doing 14 HP of damage. We knock it out. Alakazam outspeeds, and Psybeam does quite a bit. Thankfully, it doesn't confuse me. I go for Earthquake, and it doesn't one-hit Alakazam. It retaliates with Psychic, doing a lot more than Psybeam did and dropping our special. We knock it out the next turn, but we only have 82 HP left. But thankfully, we have Rest, and Rhydon is the next Pokemon. And man, am I glad I hung on to this move. While asleep, Rhydon just goes for Leer and Horn Drill, which can't hit us because we're faster. It has much better defense than Alakazam and withstands an Earthquake as well, but it only hits us with Fury Attack. Rhydon doesn't have any good attacking moves, which is unfortunate. We knock it out with the second Earthquake, and we're on to Gyarados. I go for Rock Slide and miss. It hits me with Leer, further badge boosting me. Our next Rock Slide hits, and it's a one-shot, no crit needed. Next up is Arcanine, and had I just gone for Earthquake, probably would have been a one-shot. Rock Slide fails to get the one-shot, but Arcanine just KOs itself because it goes for Takedown. Last is Venusaur. I go for Earthquake, and it does over half, and Venusaur charges for Solar Beam. Our next Earthquake hits, and Don Dozo has done it. And just like the last video, let's cue that old-school J-Rose 11 victory music. And let me just say, for my first custom-made backport cross-gen run, whatever you want to call it, this was a really fun Pokemon to use, and Don Dozo performed pretty well in Gen 1. Maybe I'll do a solo run with it in Scarlet and Violet if I can get my hands on a level 5 Don Dozo. Anyway though, let's see its final time and level. It finishes the game at level 66, with a final in-game time of 4 hours and 17 minutes. And I'm not going to bring up the tier list because there's a bunch of Pokemon on there that I've already ran but have yet to release the videos because I'm still in the process of editing them, but just know that Don Dozo is very high in the C tier. Right behind Arbok as the second best Pokemon in the C tier for now. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for the continued support on the channel. And I have a few questions for you. I still have a few Sanqui ROMs that I've generated in the past, and some of those being the Gen 3 and Gen 4 starters. Would you guys still want to see those runs, or would you rather me make my own ROMs with those Pokemon, try to put in some new moves, and run them that way? I'm curious as to what your answers are. If we were to do the Sanqui ROMs, you know, it would be much faster, you'd get videos quicker. 
But if I made the ROMs myself, they'd be more vanilla Gen 1 in a way. You wouldn't have the wonky movesets that some of the teams have, like, you know, Misty Starmie having Hydro Pump, or Giovanni's Doug Trio having Night Slash, or Agatha's Pokemon having, I guess, for better or for worse movesets, pending on, you know, the Pokemon you're running, pending how you feel about it. Anyway, I'm on vacation this holiday week, and I do plan on doing some streams over on Twitch, playing some Super Mario RPG Remake, and trying my hand at some monotype Nuzlocks in Gen 1, along with editing a few videos that I have waiting. I'll catch you guys in my next one. Take care.